Alrighty guys, today I'm going to be setting up, modifying, testing, and reviewing Viver's largest sandblasting cabinet and dust collector combo. I was in the market to get a sandblaster for not only some knife making applications, which we'll talk about later, but also for general restoration work. Thankfully, Vivor was kind enough to send us this unit for testing on the channel. I'll hit the highlights of the assembly, however, I want to focus more on the initial modifications I did to the system. There is a long history online of these style blast cabinets, and I implemented the best modifications that many other users have touted. The basic installation does take a significant amount of time, so make sure to set aside a few hours to construct your blaster. During the assembly, I applied construction caulking adhesive to many of the sheet metal joints to prevent any leakage of sand in the future. I don't feel like this was really necessary, but anything you can do to prevent a messy shop is worth it in my opinion. I'll note here that the Vivor Sandblaster did come with some silicone caulk, but I had this white stuff loaded up in the gun already and used it instead. Once our dust collection is installed later, the cabinet will be run at a negative pressure, meaning that all of the outside air will want to come into the cabinet through any of the nooks and crannies. The main air intake will be this big circle here, which we are putting this baffle in front of in order to stop any miscellaneous spray and ricochets of media to go just straight out of that hole and into the shop. This baffle came with the system. I sealed up the corners here with some epoxy and some caulking. Uh, one of those two probably would have done fine, but I used both. Once this is installed, it will direct the air intake to be coming into the cabinet at the bottom right hand side. When installing the armholes in the front of the cabinet, I really didn't like the self-tapping hardware that came with the kit. I decided to enlarge these holes to accept some quarter inch stainless steel fasteners I had in the shop from a previous project. I feel like these are a much cleaner solution that will provide a strong hold for years to come. Alright, looking at the components that come with the air system here, uh, we have two barbed fittings and then we have this coupling for the middle. Uh, basically the way this works is that you would screw in one barb fitting on the left side here and this would go towards the gun and then you screw in the other barb fitting from the outside of the cabinet and it would hold this to the cabinet so it would go like this into the side of the cabinet it would hold it all together and then you would bring your air and push it up on this barb fitting for the intake while this would work just fine we can do better so i ordered some additional pieces here we have a T for the inside because I'd like to not only supply air to the sandblasting gun but also to this air blow gun in order to blow parts off when we're done sandblasting. And then we have some other 90s and whatnot because we'll be doing some piping on the side of the cabinet adding this regulator slash liquid catcher. And the idea here is to catch water that is coming from our compressor that has settled out in our compressor. We're catching that water here instead of contaminating our sand. And it also gives us the nice ability to regulate the air pressure going into the cabinet to the gun uh, at the side of the unit and not far away at the compressor. So we'll be mounting this to the side of the cabinet as well. I sourced most of the fittings and extra components shown today from Amazon and we'll put some of these affiliate links in the description below. If you use these links, the channel will get a finder's feed paid by Amazon, which really helps keep these videos coming your way. I feel like an air filter regulator like the one we are installing today is a necessity for a sandblasting cabinet. Not only will you be able to fine tune the pressure at the cabinet with the regulator, you'll also knock out the bulk of the liquids from your air compressor. Depending on the climate that you live in, this can be a significant amount of fluid which will gum up your sand if not caught. Speaking of compressors, the compressor I'm using in my shop is a Craftsman Pro 150 PSI 27 gallon unit that I purchased in 2013. It moves 5.8 standard cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI. A sandblaster is pretty demanding from an airflow perspective, and from what I read online, the bigger the better when it comes to your supply compressor. After mounting the regulator on the side of the cabinet, I cut some quarter inch line to hook up the air gun to the inside T. This air gun is not supplied with the Vivor kit and is an add-on to our build. These come in handy when you want to blow sand off of your finished parts in the cabinet before taking them out. With the dust collection system running, the inside of the cabinet is the best place to clean off your parts. I used the supplied quarter inch line to hook up the air supply to the main blaster, which shouldn't last very long, but we'll get into that in a moment. Before getting started, I realized that I used the wrong air fitting on my regulator, so I removed it, swapped out the fitting, and then put it back on the unit. The regulator mount design made this a fairly easy task. Next up, it's time to do some leak testing. I hooked up my air compressor and then turned the ball valve into the on position. 
Then I opened the regulator until I started seeing some pressure on the gauge. It's at this point I heard a leak in the system. Upon investigation, I found that the quarter inch line going to the main blaster was the culprit at the bar fitting. I swapped out this quarter inch line with some spare standard quarter inch reinforced line that I had ordered for the air gun. After tightening down the clamp, this solved the leak. To recap our air system, the compressor comes in here. We have a ball valve upstream of our regulator. This regulator also catches liquids. We have a barb fitting connecting a quarter inch line to another barb fitting and an elbow. This elbow connects to a T on the inside of the cabinet and it has two barb fittings coming off of it with quarter inch lines. One goes to our blow gun for cleaning off parts and the other goes to the sandblasting gun itself. With the air intake system figured out, I moved on to installing the gloves. For the most part, this is fairly self-explanatory. However, I will suggest you install your gloves with a slight 45 degree cant since this is a more natural position when you're actually using the machine. One of the major upgrades we'll be doing today is replacing this siphoning tube. The way this guy works is it goes into your cabinet here, all the way down into the funnel. And in theory, you'd have a very high level of sand. This requires a high level of sand to work right. And it sucks the sand up into the gun. You spray what you're spraying, the sand falls back down and this thing continuously sucks up from the funnel. The issue with this is as you're going, the near siphon tube area generally creates some voids, which requires you to shake the funnel a little bit to get it to fall back around the siphon tube. It normally only works well with a ton of media. You can't use a small amount of media with one of these. And people just have headaches with these guys. It's very common in most of the sandblasters of this caliper to have a siphoning tube. And it's also very common for that being the first modification most people do to their cabinets is removing this tube and putting a metering valve, which allows you to use way less sand in your funnel and also efficiently feeds the gun so that you don't get any spurt and stops uh, when you're trying to sandblast your parts. So yeah, that's why we're gonna be doing this metering valve from day one and not even bothering with this siphoning tube. There are numerous examples of people DIYing this metering valve. However, I decided to hit the easy button and order one from partswasherupgradekit.com. A gentleman named Ron runs that site and was very helpful with explaining how this valve works in addition to fielding some questions I had about its operation. I'll add his link to this metering valve in the video description. The installation is fairly straightforward and all you'll need to do is drill a one and one quarter of an inch hole into your sandblaster's trap door. Then you'll sandwich your door in between the metering valve and the supplied coupler washer combo. Later in this video, when I demonstrate how to drain sand from the system, I decide to remove this metering valve, cut away the gasket material around the washer, and then reinstall it so that there's no gasket material in the joint. I found this to be a much more rigid connection. In order to get your sand from the metering valve to the blasting gun, you'll need to pop a hole into the side of your funnel. To do this, I'm going to be using this manual knockout punch that was designed for thin wall sheet metal. I was a little apprehensive about this tool at first, but I've now used it on multiple other projects since buying it for this task. It's honestly a pretty handy piece of kit for your shop, especially if you do any electrical work. In a nutshell, you use the threaded rod to pull this cutter through the steel. The only thing I wish this kit had were some smaller sizes, so they don't need to drill such a big hole to get going. For most of the cutters in the kit, you need to have a three quarters of an inch hole. The smallest cutter uses a half of an inch hole, and this could be used first if you don't have a three quarters of an inch drill bit. The nice thing about the holes this cutter produces is that they are very clean and don't have a large nasty burr, which is definitely a luxury for projects like this one. All right, so I messed up. The hole I just put in the side of this thing is way bigger than my grommet. Uh, it's actually bigger than an inch. I thought it was an inch, but it was actually made for a one inch conduit, which is 1.36 inches in diameter. So this hole is much larger than it needs to be. In order to fix that, I went over to my 3D printer and made this little piece here, which will basically cover up the oversized hole, but still provide the appropriate size hole in the center for my grommet. So that is what we're gonna be installing now. I just wanted to make a note here because this is obviously uh, not a common piece that comes with the machine. It's something I made. So let's install that right now. So major win for that 3D printer. I gotta say it's been one of the tools I've purchased recently that really gets used all the time. If you're curious on the dimensions of this piece or wanna make one intentionally for your build, I'll put a link to the CAD file down below. 
I probably could have put a little bit more clearance into the hole here since pushing a tube through it was a tough job. It all worked though and if I ever find that a slight restriction at the grommet causes issues, I can enlarge the hole in my model. With the hose that poked through the funnel, I threaded it up through the gate and installed it onto the gun. All right, here's a recap of our metering valve installation. You can see we have our end cap here that we drilled the hole through. I went ahead and zip tied this shut so it doesn't open by accident. It's actually very easy to open it with that little lever there. It'll throw this trap door open and spill sand all over the place. But this is our metering valve. Uh, we have it going to a one half of an inch ID tube. It comes up the side here into our funnel. You can see the hole that was too big and the grommet on the inside with the four fasteners around it. And looking at it from the inside, you can see we have our 3D printed part there, which is just a little plate for the grommet. It comes through the grate here. This half inch tube comes straight through the grate. Then it comes on over here to the gun. And now with the air system done and the metering valve, we have a fully operational sandblasting gun here. So one of the cool things about this Viver sandblaster is it comes with a sweet dust collector and I heard that these things are golden. They pull a very strong amount of vacuum on the inside of the cabinet. And also they are easy to dump the media out of the bottom of, uh, and you can recollect that media and reuse it. So anyway, we're gonna be installing this guy. Now it's designed to be mounted on the back of this cabinet. You can see this hole right there. And if you noticed, I have a pretty tight spot here. I have a ledge at the bottom uh, that this cabinet can come up to before of being on uneven ground, not to mention I like putting it up against the back of the wall just in general, no matter where I put it in my shop. So I thought about options I had to move this location from the back of the cabinet for the dust collector. One of those was mounting it on the wall, which I would have had to create a special bracket. Not a big deal, but I decided to go with a more mobile option so that I can move the entire system around more easily and not be anchored down to a spot in the wall. So we're gonna be putting it on the side of this cabinet and then blocking off this back hole. I actually printed out this plate here to block off that back hole. We're just gonna put some silicone on the back here, put it over that hole and that will have it sufficiently blocked off. We will cut a hole in the side of the cabinet and mount our dust collector there. This could obviously have been done with some sheet metal instead, but drawing this cover up in Fusion 360 and printing it was an easier solution. As a note here, all the parts I'm printing for this build are made from ESUN PLA+, Plus, which is a pretty tough filament, but not very temperature resistant. I'll be keeping an eye on them to see if they deform over time. If they do, I'll opt for replacing them with some PET-G or carbon fiber reinforced nylon. The hole we're putting into the side of this cabinet is going to be made with the largest cutter in the kit. This two inch cutter was the perfect size and it made it through the cabinet wall like a hot knife through butter. The provided plate and rubber grommet fit onto the dust collector intake and then mate with the hole we just made. The four mounting bolts pulled the dust collector against the side of the machine, which puts pressure on the rubber grommet around the edges of the hole. Once again, we'll be using the 3D printer to design a part for this machine. In this case, we're making a baffle to position the air intake at the bottom of the cabinet. This part isn't necessary and could also be made from sheet metal, but at this point in the build, I'm honestly just having fun making stuff to print. As I stated before, there will be free print files for the grommet holder, backplate cover, and this intake baffle in the video description below. The next step of the process will be wiring in a switch and outlet bank onto the side of the cabinet for convenience. I'll note here that I'm not an electrician and that you should do all your wiring at your own risk. I'll speed up this footage pretty fast since this really isn't a video on how to wire a switch, but I'll also include a wiring diagram I drew up for this switch on the screen. It's also worth noting here that I have a dedicated 20 amp circuit that I'll be running this machine on in my shop. I tested this machine during operation and it draws about 12 amps, which in combination with an air compressor will likely trip the breakers on your 15 amp circuits. Getting started here in the wiring, I have the power cable coming in to the bottom of the outlet box, going through a piece of conduit to our switch box, where I'll wire up the switch, 
send it back through the conduit to the outlets. Then the dust collector and whatever lights I put into the cabinet will be plugged into the outlet box and there will be one switch that can turn them on and off together. This light bar came with the machine and does a great job at keeping everything visible in the cabinet during use. I added a cable gland to this wire exiting the machine to prevent any dust from making it out. The switch box comes pre-wired so all you have to do is connect your leads to the switch and then you're in business. To finish out our assembly we will be installing the main door and hinges. This was actually a pretty challenging part of the setup and took a little head balancing to get all the screws started. The air struts are easy to install, but note that they have a specific orientation for proper installation. You want the rod portion to be pointed downward so as not to collect dust at the seal and prematurely wear out. The kit also comes with this foam adhesive seal to put around the perimeter of your door. I'll be trying out this 120 grit aluminum oxide blasting media. If any of you have recommendations on good blasting media, please share your experiences in the comment section below. I started off with removing the scale from this piece of angle iron and while it worked, the progress was very slow going. The machine wasn't getting the best feeding of media through the metering valve and at this point I was getting a little frustrated. To troubleshoot, I first varied the pressure of my air intake and also messed with the metering valve itself but neither really helped my issue. It wasn't until I replaced the nozzle of my gun with a much larger nozzle that I started getting good results. This old hammer here went way faster than the angle iron and I was pretty darn pleased with how the machine performed. While blasting the hammer, I recorded the regulator and you can see that it's collecting a good deal of fluid from the air coming out of my compressor. This once again underlines the importance of having a water catch on your intake. Before going through a knife making related application, I want to show how you can drain the dust collector and reclaim some of your media. If you're careful, you can flip the latch and get the dust collector emptied without making much of a mess, which is really nice. To drain your main funnel, you can just pop off this plug on the bottom of the metering valve T. Ideally, you want to strain the sand so as to collect any big chunks of debris from the items that you've been blasting. While we have the sand reservoir drained, I decided to improve the rigidity of my metering valve as I mentioned I'd show earlier in the video. The washer provided me with a nice imprint on the trapdoor gasket material that I can cut out with an X-Acto knife. With the gasket cut back, I made sure to get this metering valve nice and tightly connected to the trap door this time around. This is the knife that we'll be using the test in the sandblaster. I made this guy a couple years ago as a knife making 101 style video geared towards new makers with basic tools. If I recall correctly, it has a 220 grit finish on the blade. The handle scales are G10 and the pins are brass. In the blaster, I go over the entire knife, not being shy with the G10 or the fiber laser etch markings. Out of the cabinet, I gotta say this knife looks pretty cool sandblasted. I really like the way the gray matte finish looks, however, being a 1084 high carbon steel blade, I know that it will not hold up well to the elements if left in this condition. So for fun, I decided to test a workflow for a stonewashed finish where we start off with a sandblasted blade. I etched it for about 20 minutes and then neutralized the acid with some baking soda. After that, I tumbled the blade for about 15 minutes. With tumbling complete, I cleaned off the blade with some WD-40, and I can say that I think this test turned out pretty darn good. I'm not sure how well this finish will hold up, but I guess time will tell. Y'all let me know if you want to see some corrosion testing between different sandblasted blade finishes in the future. Well, I'm pretty happy with how this sandblaster turned out and how it performs. Major thanks to Vivor for sending me this unit for testing and review. The kit they sent me cost around $460 at the time of this review, and I think with some modifications, the machine really punches above its weight. The additional modifications cost around $153, and the tools you'll need to buy in order to do these mods were around $86. This brings the total cost of the assembly to around $700, not included the additional electrical work I did on the side of the unit. If you're interested in picking up one of these Vivor sandblasters, I'll put the link down below along with a 5% discount code. In addition, I'll have all of the CAD files and other product links down there as well. If y'all enjoyed this video and got something out of it, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. After you're done with that, check out some of these other videos that just popped up on your screen that I've made. You may like them. At least, I hope you do, but if you don't, that's fine too. I'm just saying that you may. Okay, catch y'all later.